Well, what's up, everybody? This is Jordan from MakeSureMonk.com. Welcome to Podcast 61, I believe. Uh, so, so let me tell you a little background about this podcast. Uh, I was trying to get a podcast out last week, and to do that, uh, I was, uh, I actually went to a real estate shoot and, uh, or a shopping center, commercial shoot, whatever you want to call it. And, uh, so on the way back, I recorded a podcast in the car. Uh, that was the only time I, I would, I would have a chance to actually record the podcast. And, uh, I knew that was going to be, uh, kind of tough because I had to go back home, had to edit the files, had to give them to the person, the, 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 the client. And so I was like, why not just, you know, I got a 25 minute drive or so somewhere around there. Why don't I just go ahead and uh, record the podcast and use the audio and, and use the video and all that kind of stuff. So I recorded the podcast and when I got home and I looked at the video, I was like, I don't, I, I kind of felt, it kind of felt just, you know, just half of the quality, I guess it could have been. So I didn't, I didn't put one out. So basically this episode is re-recording what I talked about in the car. Good news is I actually have notes in front of me because I can actually look at notes and I'm not concentrating on driving. So with this podcast, it's, uh, it's kind of based off of the, uh, off of a comment a few weeks ago about the Picture Monk Nation Facebook page. I put a photo out there a while back, uh, when we were at the beach on vacation. I took a picture of the Milky Way and it kind of spanned across the top of the photo and, uh, you know, you had like a little stairway, walkway thing that goes in front of it. And I put it on the uh, Picture Monk Nation Facebook page, the, the pa- Facebook group, and uh, got a couple likes on there, which was kind of cool. But then uh, one of the uh, one of the the group members, Mike Davis, said, "Why don't you make a podcast talking about how you do that?" Because he hasn't attempted to do something like that before. So this podcast is basically geared towards shooting the Milky Way. Uh, I've done a podcast about recording uh, uh, or, or, or photographing. Uh, night stuff. So this is kind of the same thing. It's kind of the basic principles is the same thing. Uh, but there's a few little tweaks that you have to kind of, kind of change up. So that's kind of what I want to talk about in this episode. The, uh, the first thing I want to talk about, I always talk about news or articles and all that kind of fun stuff that I found. But this one actually relates to the podcast. So I'm going to skip that for just a quick second and go right into the listener question. And then we'll roll into the, uh, the, uh, the main topic. So, uh, the listener question is from, uh, I don't have their name. Either I didn't put the name or, or, uh, or I didn't retype the name or, uh, they didn't leave the name. So if this was your question, sorry about that. But this person says, <clears throat> I can't seem to get anyone to like, in quotes, my, uh, my like or comment on my photos. Do you have any suggestions? And when I found this, uh, I, I thought it was like a, a, you know, it's, it's a common question, I guess, in a, in a way. Uh, it's, it's kind of a question nobody ever wants to admit. You want to, you know, you want, you want people to think when you put a photo out there that you're trying to promote or advertise and, and it's, uh, it's a, it's a really good photo. You want people, you know, people to, to think that everybody's liking it and it's, it's amazing and all this kind of stuff. But, um, but th- this kind of triggered a post that I read earlier in the day or a video that I watched earlier in the day as well. And it's from, Ted Forbes of The Art of Photography. And it's about a seven, seven and a half, uh, seven and a half minute video talking about what he calls the brutal truth of photography. The fact that nobody is interested in seeing your photographs. Uh, and this is his words. Nobody cares about the work that you're doing as a photographer. Uh, it's, uh, it's it's kind of hard for me to do like the cliff notes of the video. It's a really great video though. Uh, the the some of the points that he brings up are really great, really amazing, and they're, they're, they are true. Uh, but then he kind of kind of rolls into the positives sort of, sort of toward the end, and uh, I, I just really enjoyed the video. So uh, go, my comments about your question are, um, you know, don't base your 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 photography or your work or anything like that on what people like or comment on. Don't do that. You know, it's, if it's, um, if it's good work and people like it, they will eventually come around and they'll start liking and commenting and participating and interacting and all that kind of stuff. So don't worry about liking. You're, you're not, you're not, I guess you're not supposed to, uh, put out work just to get likes and comments. That's not the whole point. You're supposed to put out uh, comments uh, or photos and, co- and stuff like that to to share, just to just say, hey, check this out. It's kind of a cool thing. If you like it, let me know. If not, it's no big deal. Don't put it out there because you want to get a like, because a like means nothing, really. Um, anybody can like a photo. Uh, it, it, you want them to um, you want them to keep seeing your work 
and know know who you are and all this kind of stuff. So uh, don't just do it and and think that you need a like out of it. Do it because you actually like doing it. So that's my comments on it. But again, uh, Ted Forbes, again, the article is called The Brutal Truth, Nobody Cares About Your Photography. I'll link to that on the show notes, picturemonk.com slash PMP061. And so let's roll into the main topic. Uh, so I'm going to roll back to the, the, uh, the, the article real quick that I found. The article is called 80% of Americans Can't See the Milky Way. And so what it basically talks about is pollution and how development and everything are, are, are coming up. And, you know, the more light pollution out there, the more that lesser and lesser amount of people are seeing even stars in the sky. Uh, I'm lucky enough, even though I have an airport that's very, very, you know, uh, I want to say about 10 miles away, five miles away, something like that. Uh, it's very close to me. However, I can still see the stars at night. Not a whole lot, but I can still see the, scar- the stars. Uh, not going to see the Milky Way anywhere near my my location, but I uh, kind of have to drive about an hour, hour and a half or so away, uh, maybe 45 minutes if you're lucky, to get a, goal, a cool night shot where you can have a hint of the Milky Way. So that is why when I go to the beach, and this is where this photo came from, when I go to the beach, I always try to uh, take a picture of, of the Milky Way because you know, you point, especially in the summer, usually the Milky Way is right over the ocean on the, at least on the East Coast it is. So when I uh, point the camera over the ocean, it's a dead space out there. There's nothing, there's no, no lights, no nothing out there. So it's going to be really dark. The only time you have to compete with it is the moon. And that's kind of what we had to deal with uh, later in the week. But uh, the first night that I was there that I was able to shoot, um, <clears throat> I got, a, I got a pretty good shot of the Milky Way. So uh, kind of what led up to that shot is doing the research of, of, uh, of where the Milky Way is going to be. And I've talked about this app for a very long time. I still use it. I will never probably get rid of it off of my phone, but it is the Starwalk app. And uh, a lot of people do use this app too. A lot of people use what's called the, uh, the Photographer's Ephemeris. Um, it's a, a desktop app, and I think they also have a, um, a mobile version. I've never really got into using it. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a very powerful tool, um, but it's uh, it, it's just to me it's kind of clunky. So I don't like that. I like the Starwalk app because it allows you to hold your phone up to the sky, see where the Milky Way is going to be. And you can even advance time to see how it's going to move, see which part of the Milky Way you're going to get, uh, point out star constellations, point out individual stars, uh, see where the, the planets are, all kinds of stuff. You can do all that fun stuff from that app and it really helps me out. It, it tells me where exactly where the Milky Way is going to be and at what time it's going to pop over the horizon um, and, and kind of what segment of the Milky Way, where, where the brightest part of the Milky Way is going to be. So that's what I use all the time. And uh, even for this trip, I knew during the summer, usually it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's on the East Coast, at least uh, next to the ocean, like right over the ocean. So I didn't really have to use it this, this time, but if I'm ever out and, and need to know where it is, that's what I use. And also, uh, so, so that app is kind of a research segment. And also, uh, the light pollution, kind of what they were talking about in the article, there's a map uh, that you can look at online. I'll link to that in the show notes as well. And it's a light pollution app. So it shows everywhere in the world where all the major light pollution points are. So on the map, if you look and you see reds and yellows, you, you know, you got a whole lot of light near you and you're not going to be able to see much. So you might need to get out of that area. Uh, at least I was looking in the United States, at least obviously on the East Coast, it's super bright. A little bit of West Coast is super bright, but sort of squished in the middle around like the Nevada area, um, uh, Colorado, stuff like that. It's not as light polluted as most of the other places. So if you live in that sort of section, you're, you're golden to get some really good shots, uh, assuming the sky conditions and stuff like that are good. But, but it's a, it's a really good app to, to check out. Uh, so it's, it's a, it's a web link. So I'll send that as far as the show notes as well. And so let's roll into the equipment. Equipment's a big deal, right? You need, you need a camera and stuff to take photos. Uh, so the equipment, obviously you need a tripod. You can't handhold any of this. It's not going to happen. I don't care how high you bump your ISO. Uh, even if you do bump it up that high to see it, it's not going to be a, a flattering photo whatsoever. Uh, I recommend getting a wide, fast lens. So uh, I have a wide lens, but not a fast lens. So um, what I usually do is pop on my wide angle lens and it's a 17 to 40, it's an F4, I believe. And so that's the widest I can go and the, the fastest I can go. 
And so I can't, I can't go any, any better than that. I have a, I have a, a, a prime lens, a 50 millimeter prime lens, but I'm not going to be able to get much of the sky if I use that. So I have to use the wide angle and I'll get into why the wide angle is really good here in just a little bit. Um, but a wide angle lens, uh, shutter release. I use uh, the trigger trap app on my phone. It's a little uh, dongle that you plug into your camera and plug into your phone and you can do a whole bunch of cool stuff with it. So I use that. You can even just get a cheapo. Uh, I still have one also. A cheapo shutter release. Uh, it's probably like six bucks on Amazon or something like that. Because uh, you're going to want to uh, want to have that. So one one you don't you know shake the camera when you're taking the photo. And also if you have to get in bulb mode, which bulb mode is uh, the mode on the camera where you click the shutter and as long as you hold the shutter button down, you uh, continue taking the photo. So that is uh, that is a really good uh, thing to have because you don't want to, you know, have your finger on the shutter button because it's just not going to work that way. You have to get a cable release for that. Uh, some people actually, uh, I heard one guy, he was talking about how he didn't have a shutter release where he was and he, or he didn't bring it at least. So he found a rock and he found a rubber band. And so he put his camera on the two second time or the 10 second timer and then, uh, and then put it on bold mode, put the rock on the shutter button, wrap the rubber band around it. And then that's how it held in the shutter button. I just thought that was a f fun little, fun little thing. Uh, next time though, for sure, pack your, uh, <laughs> your shutter release. So, uh, so let's get into, uh, the, um, the settings, settings. That's a big thing too. Uh, settings are okay. So you need to first of all set your camera to infinity focus. Uh, on the top of your lens, you'll see a uh, if you have a like an L lens, it won't really. They don't have these on kit lenses or anything like that. But on the top of a of like an L lens or a more professional lens, you'll see a uh, a meter at the top, and it shows you like the focal length and stuff like that. If you scroll all the way, scroll. Wow. If you zoom all the way. Uh, to the left, if you turn your camera to the left, that's I believe that's the direction it should go. Should go. Uh, if you do that, you'll see a little like infinity symbol, and that usually represents that you're at infinity focus, meaning everything from this point on is going to be in, in sharp focus. So I'll p turn that all the way to the. Um, actually, I believe it's the left, right? One of those. Um, <laughs> it's hard to tell without a without a, the, a lens in front of me. Actually, I do have a lens in front of me. But it doesn't have the meter on it, dang. Um, but anyway, <laughs> yeah, if you have the meter on there just for the look, look for the little infinity symbol, um, you could do that, or you can do uh, what I normally do, and that's find something that is very far away and actually let the camera focus in on that. So I'll, like when I was at the beach, I saw, you know, beach houses on the, on the, on the beach there located on the beach. I would just find a light that was on a porch or something that was pretty far away. I'd let the camera focus in on that light. And then I'd switch it to uh, manual focus and not ever touch it ever again. And everything seemed to be in perfect focus. So that really, uh, that was really my quick method of doing it. So that's a, that's an easy way of doing it. Uh, the widest aperture, what I was talking about earlier, the widest aperture will, uh, let more light in. Uh, so if you have, if you happen to be lucky enough to have like an f2.8 and it's a wide angle lens, uh, you're, you're good to go. And uh, what the, the thing I was talking about using a wide angle, the reason you want to really use a wide angle is not because you get to see the whole sky. Uh, the, it will allow you uh, to, to keep your shutter open longer. And the reason you get to do this is because uh, you, have, you have the whole sky, the wide angle picture of the sky. And when you, when you take that photo, you know, the, the earth is, is spinning. So the stars are going to look like they're in motion. If you zoom in and you take a photo, you're going to see the stars going really quick on the sky, just moving really, really fast. But if you have a wide angle lens, you're, you're minimizing that distance from, you know, the 20, 20 second exposure that you're doing that the stars move. So they're more apt to be in a, like a perfect circle. So that's a really, that's a really good thing to, uh, to pay attention to. Uh, if you do happen to have like a, just a regular 18 to 55 or something like that kit lens, uh, you're still going to get uh, good photos. You just need to uh, be aware that you can't leave your shutter open long, a whole long, you know, long time, like past probably 20 seconds or something like that, 20, 25 seconds, because you're going to start seeing motion in the stars. Now, if you're going for star trail photos, obviously you're, you're good to go. But if you want tack sharp stars with the Milky Way there, uh, you're going to need to, um, you're going to need to make sure you have a wider angle lens. And the shutter speed in the ISO and stuff like that, uh, that's kind of, you know, depending on the, the area you're at, 
I kept shooting mine around 30, uh, 3200 ISO. Uh, that was right around the, the perfect one. Sometimes I was able to bump it up to, uh, or bump it down actually to 1600, reducing the noise and, uh, but I had to keep my shutter open a little bit longer, which was okay. It, it didn't happen to uh, move the stars that much. Um, but I, for the most part, I kept it around 3200. My shutter speed varied as well. I would just, I, even, even though I was only doing 20 second exposures or something like that, the camera can do that without the shutter release, but I, I like to count it in my head. And, uh, and, and, and that way I know how, uh, how long I'm doing the, the, the shutter release or the, the, the exposure. And then if that, it looks a little too dark or I check the histogram, histogram, it looks too dark. Then I'll do 23 seconds, 25 seconds, somewhere around there. So that's my, uh, my, my procedure, I guess, for doing that. So after I got the photo, I went back into, uh, to Lightroom and I've, I've since re-edited the photo once I got back on the computer here, but I edited it in the field on my, on my laptop. And so basically what I did was, uh, uh, I, I, I did a couple variations of, uh, the black slider, the white slider, contrast clarity and dehaze. Those, those kind of five things are the, the, the main parts to bring out the image. Uh, I did mess with the color temperature too, uh, just to make it a little bit more blue because, uh, the lights from the houses and stuff like that were making, were casting a yellow haze on the, on the beach. Uh, so I got a, got a little bit of that, played with that, did a little bit, a little bit of desaturation as well. Uh, but this kind of, it's, it's kind of easier if I show you how to, to edit the, uh, the Milky Way shot because not only do you have to work with the sliders, but you also have to kind of be an artist, <laughs> at least in the, the, the method that I use. So you have to, I'm not calling myself an artist. I'm just saying you have to, you have to paint stuff in. And so what that involves is brushes in, uh, in Lightroom or Photoshop, but I use Lightroom in this particular tutorial. And so, uh, I have a video that was released yesterday. So this comes out on Tuesday. Video that was released on Monday, and so you can see how I edited a for a uh, a, uh, a a Milky Way shot. Uh, it wasn't the one that I posted on Facebook, but it was uh, it's a different one, and it is actually a little bit harder. So I I'll show you how I edit it, and that kind of method is what I use to edit all of the Milky Way shots that I do. So uh, it's I'm not going to really talk about it that much, just because it's a whole lot easier for you to uh for you to see so make sure you check out that video on the youtube channel picturemonk.com slash youtube that'll take you there and you can subscribe and see all the videos and all that kind of stuff so uh so that's basically it i mean it, it it's basically like taking a night shot just you have to be cognizant cognizant of where the milky way is and then editing is the main part that brings it out uh you can you can try to bring it out as much as possible in camera by you know making sure that the uh the lighting is correct um and, and all that kind of stuff at which and my photo is part, you know, uh, for the most part correct. Uh, but just doing the editing brings it out even more. There's a whole lot more methods to use, like uh, stacking a black frame on top of it and uh, to minimize noise and, and stacking multiple shots in the Milky Way using blend modes and doing all that stuff. You don't really need to do all that. You just need to kind of paint in the areas of the Milky Way just to enhance them a little bit. So again, check out that video on the YouTube channel. It'll show you exactly how I do it, and uh, you can kind of follow along with your shots. So uh, the the last segment, as always, is the widget of the week. And in this widget of the week, I um, I actually have a video coming up about this too, but I wanted to go ahead and give it to you guys early. And so it's a uh, a Lightroom plugin, which. I have been waiting for something like this for a very long time. I have no clue how it works, but it works and it works amazing. And so I, I recorded a video last night about showing you how to do this and uh, you can uh, you can check it out, but it's a Lightroom, um, it's a Lightroom Instagram plugin. It will allow you to post photos directly from Lightroom to Instagram without having to do a bunch of exporting and, and getting it on your phone and because uh, and, and, you should be able to only upload stuff from your phone. So you would have to like put them on Dropbox, download them on your phone, uh, airdrop them from your computer if you have a Mac, uh, airdrop them from your, your Mac to your phone, um, uh, email them to yourself, text them to yourself, all that kind of stuff. You would have to do all of that just to get a photo on Instagram that you took with your, your regular camera and not your phone. So this will allow you to take photos directly from your Lightroom catalog, add captions, add hashtags, 
uh, all that kind of stuff and uh, it'll immediately post on Instagram and it works amazing. So I have a video again coming out about that, but you can go to uh, the plugin now and download it. It's uh, lrinstagram.com. I'll have a link to that on the show notes uh, and uh, the video will come, be coming out shortly after this. I just have to make sure I edit it. And so uh, again, it's amazing plugin. I recommend it very, very much. And uh, like I said, it works beautifully. I tested it out last night, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, I got to real, I got to record a video about this." So uh, again, I tested it out last night. It's awesome. But uh, check it out and let me know what you guys think about it. So uh, that is basically the podcast. I kind of feel like I ran through it real quick, but I've already had a practice run in the car. So all right, guys, that's about it. So uh, Mike, hope you enjoyed that uh, that podcast because it was kind of based on what you wanted to talk about. Uh, make sure again you go to if you haven't already. Uh, go to the Picture Monk Nation Facebook page, and that is at picturemonk.com slash nation. You can uh, type in that URL. It'll redirect you to Facebook, and you can join and start posting your photos there. Come and talk with everybody. Uh, we're starting to get a lot more photos being posted, which is great. Uh, I'm trying to post as many as I can. Uh, these these videos are getting in the way. <laughs> so I'm trying to post as many as I can and, um, and uh, just have fun up there. So... Thanks uh, for joining me in this podcast. It was, again, a very good podcast about finally being able to shoot the Milky Way. And uh, you can check all the notes at picturemonk.com slash PMP061. And uh, I'll see you next week, guys. (laughs) 